Okay guys, this video is going to show you how to set up a trout reel all the way from the backing to the end of the tippet. And you're going to start out with just a plain old piece of backing here. And to begin with, you're going to pull that into a loop. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab it over itself like this. And then I'm going to make an overhand knot with this loop. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over and pinch it. And then pass the loop that I created through the loop that I made two times. This is going to be a double surgeon's loop and the second time through is a little tricky but you can keep it pinched and go ahead and grab it on through. And then you're going to gently tighten it up so you don't have a lot of excess. As you can see that's going to create just your basic loop in the end of the fly line and then one little piece of tag which you're going to cut off. So we'll go ahead and cut that. You want it to be fairly neat but ultimately this is probably never going to show. Alright, now once you have your loop made this could not be easier really. Just go ahead and take the loop, put your fingers through it like that, and grab the actual line and pull it through. So basically what you've made here is a slip loop. You can pull it up tight, slide it back and forth, etc. Now in this case I've got an old school reel. This reel has a closed frame and as you can see you can't really go through that once you've put the spool in there. So you've got to take that into account. If you have a reel like this, pass your loop through the reel frame itself before you ever put it on the spool. You can go ahead and run that down the backing and set it aside. Then get your spool and run this open loop you've made over the spool. What you'll find is if you run it in this direction, it'll slide. And when you re reel the spool forward, you won't get anywhere. However, if you find that's the case, just loosen it up and flip it around. This is going to change depending on which side of the reel you reel from, if you're left hand retrieve or right hand retrieve. So just basically guess and check. Put it on there. If it doesn't work, flip it over and do it the other way. Now as you can see, once you've got it locked into place like this, it'll actually wind. So you can go ahead and set it in your frame. But as you do, you want to be really careful that you're not trapping that line underneath. So as you put it on there, keep an eye on it. You want it to go ahead and lay in there gently and not get caught between, see, the frame and the spool here. Then when you turn it over, you go ahead and push it into place, and it will actually pick up line. If you wind it the other direction all the way out, it might slide. And if it's doing that to you, you need to be sure you flip it around and, and make that loop go the other way. All right, now we're going to do the next knot. This next knot is the one that many people consider be, to be the hardest. And basically, you're going to take your backing here, which is pretty small, and you're going to connect it to your fly line, which is relatively large. This is probably about five weight fly line. Now, if you just made an overhand knot, it wouldn't do you any good because you end up with the really large knot that wouldn't want to slide through the guides and would be problematic. You need to make one that's going to be smooth. And the best way to do that is to create a nail knot. Now for a nail knot you're actually going to need to make a little tool here. You can use a bobbin threader which comes with a lot of fly tying kits or you can just use a, lump, a loop of relatively thick monofilament. I find this to be a little easier because it's pretty slippery, it doesn't tend to bind as much. Now in order to do this you're going to, going to want to start with the fly line in your left hand if you're right handed. So take your fly line put it in your left hand, take your loop, place it in your left hand and pinch them together so they both go the same direction. The idea here is that you're eventually going to have to pull that way so you need the loop to be going this way or you won't be able to pull the right direction. Then take your backing and in this case you're just going to go ahead and pull off about four inches or so and pinch about halfway back. Place the four inch pinch right there in your left hand and go ahead and pinch them all together at once. That's going to leave a tag of backing here which is dropping down. And what you're going to do is you're going to actually wrap that tag over the top. One, pinch, two, pinch, three, four, and five times. And it really helps to keep these things stacked up correctly. So if you can see I've made sure those wraps are actually in line and I'm not wrapping them over themselves. Now on your fifth time, and five is usually the magic number, you can go ahead and pull this tag up and around and get this loop where you can pass the tag through the loop. In order to pass the tag through the loop you might need to kind of tweak it a little bit here but just get it to where you can get that tag through pull the tag down. Okay now you got everything pinched and you're going to start to work from the back of this loop. You may actually want to transfer the pinch to the right hand at this point. So go back here to where your loop or your tag of monofilament sticks out and begin to pull. Now what this is going to do is actually going to pull the tag end through the loops you made and out to the other side. But as you can see, you've got this little loop at the rear of what would be your running line. So it makes a little sense sometimes to go ahead and tighten that up just so you have a nice even thing to pull against. 
Once you've got it in position, still maintaining the pinch, go ahead and pull with the monofilament to slide the tag all the way through. And when you release the pinch, if you did everything right, it all ought to be pretty well stacked up. If it's just a little bit loose like it is here, just tighten it up. And then to set it, just pull tightly on both ends of the backing. And then to really get it to bite, pull on the line and the backing at the same time. Okay, at this point, you've got a nice, even, straight connection. And all you need to do is trim up very tightly against both knots. Now the easiest way, obviously, to trim these up is going to be with tying scissors, if you've got some that are fairly sharp. So go ahead and uh, pull it up. I like to tie it, or I like to cut it on a slight bias here so that as it slides through the guides, it'll have an angle to pull against. And then, obviously, you're going to want to do the same thing on the other side. So turn that over. This one can be a little tricky because backing likes to fray, especially waxed backing. So it might help to go ahead and get a hold of the backing and kind of draw it over the scissors so you get a really nice tight fit. Ooh, I need some sharper scissors, don't I? Okay, at this point, you're done. This knot is connected, it's tight, and it's pretty strong. Basically, this knot is about as strong as the coating of the line is bonded to the line itself. Now, that's not as strong as the brake strength of the line, but, I mean, hey, people land tarpon on it, so you know it's got to be okay. All right. Okay, now the next knot is actually going to be familiar because it's a repeat. You're going to go ahead and make another nail knot. So you're going to get to see this a second time. Take your loop, again place it in the side here with the fly line so they both go the same direction. Now in my case, I like to use amnesia monofilament, which is red. It does a good job of not holding a kink. And secondly, amnesia is really easy to see, so it kind of makes a de facto strike indicator at times. So once again, you're going to take the end here, and you want to probably have about a foot because you're going to need the rest of it. Go about four inches from your end, just ignore the side that's bouncing around there, and place that pinch it together so you're pinching everything in your left hand. Then you're going to take the bottom tag end and you're going to go up and over five times. One, this can be a little tricky because the amnesia likes to jump around. Two, pinching. And as I turn it around in my hands I'm drawing it up tight with each side. Three, so each one of these little loops is stacking up tight in there. Four, Can get a little hard because it's almost like a spring there at the end. And then five. Use your fingernails to make everything nice and tight. All right. <clears throat> Once again, you're going to want to pass that tag end through the little loop of mono you ran. And you can actually use amnesia for this too, but it's a little easier if you use two different colors because you can keep track of everything. So pass your loop through, or your tag end through the loop. Then when you've got it there, go ahead and flip around to the other side and draw it up. It's really important here to make sure you don't miss, because if that tag end pops out, or if this loop passes over the fly line rather than coming through cleanly, you can really come up with some problems. So you want to be sure it's actually passing through the loop and it's not going over the line. So the line is clear of the loop itself. Okay. Now again, you're going to pull it up. You're going to look at the other side and tighten with this hand, tightening with the right hand and then you're going to go ahead and just pull it out. So we're going to make kind of a quick pull in order to make it slide quickly. Yank. All right. Now if you did it right, and I did, you should see that loop sticking out and hopefully the knot won't have untangled too badly. And this one did okay. Sometimes they'll un un unsort themselves pretty bad and you just have to use your fingernails to pop them back together. So go ahead and pull the tag all the way out if it didn't pass through the first time. And then to make sure it sets up properly, Use your fingernails to guide it into position as you pull. And you may need to use your teeth on this one because these can be a little hard to set up. I'm going to go ahead and slide this over here and use my teeth. All right. I've yanked and I've tugged. I've blown your house down. <laughs> All right. That's a nice, even knot. And as you pull it, may go ahead and tighten up some more. Make sure it sets really clean and firm. Now, these are trout, so we're not talking about tarpon, but you want it to go ahead and bite into the line. Now this is a knot that honestly you should never draw into the guides to begin with, but you still want to make it as clean as possible. So again, doubling it over, go ahead and cut it off, flip it around, cut the back end off here. Okay, now you have a nice even amnesia monofilament to fly line connection. Now what good does this do you because you still got to put a leader on it, right? That's where our next knot comes in. 
Okay guys, this next knot is called the perfection loop. You're going to use amnesia monofilament again, but this time I've cut it off so it's only six inches from the fly line because I don't like to have too much to deal with. Pick a pinch point about an inch from the fly line and pinch with your left hand. Then using the tag in here, you're going to go ahead and make one loop going in front, in front of the running line. Pull it up tight. Then you're going to make a second loop behind the front one. So it's actually going to go around behind, up and over, and then in front again of the running line. You're going to make two loops like that. And that's going to give you this kind of pretzel. You need to be sure the second loop stays behind the first loop. Then you're going to pass the running line between, or the tag in between the two. And that's going to give you like a true pretzel. And then to get this knot to actually set up, all you do is pass the back loop through the front loop. So use your fingernails to go ahead and pry it through. And then when you've got it in this position right here, I find it's a little easier sometimes to stick something in the loop, like a pair of scissors, and then you can just quickly yank. And it's the yank that makes it set up in the right architecture. If you fail in the yank, you may have to start back over. But once you've got this perfection loop formed up, you're in really good shape. And see, that's a very short distance. Then all you got to do is cut off your tag end, and you've got a nice loop knot that's tied directly to your fly line. Now if you're lucky, your tapered leader is actually going to come with this knot already tied on the back end of it, but assuming it doesn't, since we're pretending like we're doing everything from scratch here, go ahead and start out with the open butt end of the tapered leader, and once again we're going to tie a perfection loop, so this time you can just see it happen. Make a loop, pinch, run around the tag end, make another loop up and behind, pinch, then take your tag end, go between the two knots, between the two loops and then simply grab the back loop through the front loop with your fingernail. Stop for a second, grab something to pull with, stick your scissors in there and yank. And as you can see again you made just a really simple little knot. Okay, cut up this tag in. We're almost done. This is the easiest one. This is the loop to loop connection and this is the reason why we do these loops is so you can consistently replace your leader if need be. Now there is one trick to this. You always want the line end loop to be in the right position. And in order to do that, you're going to always pass the leader end loop over the line end loop like this. Pass leader over line all the way back. So we'll just go ahead and do this again. Pass leader over line. Not the other way around or you'll get a hinge. And then go ahead and pinch it. And then you're just literally going to go ahead and fold over the butt end of your leader so you can slide it through. I mean you can draw the entire leader through and not much of a knot, right? Well, as long as you don't grab the back end of the perfection loop and if you're just pulling loop to loop, you get this lovely little handshake that results in a straight shot that's going to prevent you from having any kind of hinge, which is really nice. Now, if you do this the wrong way, I'll just show you real quick what happens. If you actually pass the line end over the leader end like this, then you're stuck. You've either got to pass the leader through right here. This is wrong. Do not do this. If you're passing leader through leader, then you've really messed this up. But assuming you do it this way, just so you'll understand, and you'll know when your knot is wrong, if you pull it up, so you're going to have this kind of, I don't know, 90 degree angle here. I've actually seen people show up and do this, and they regularly get made fun of in fly shops. That is incorrect, because if you let it go, see what happens? It makes a 90 degree angle and it leaves the loop open. That is not the way you want this to be. Okay, so what have we got? You've got your basic double surgeons loop, and as long as you set your architecture up properly, when you begin to wind, it'll pick up. So you pick up your line, your backing, you eventually get to the backing to fly line connection. And in this case, that's your basic nail knot and then the nail knot is also used at the other end of the line to make your amnesia monofilament connection and then just a short length of amnesia monofilament later you have your perfection loop which is tied to another perfection loop via the loop to loop knot probably the simplest knot of all and of course you can use the loop to loop knot on the back end of the fly line in the backing if you want to be able to make interchangeable you know backing to line connections. I actually will go ahead and make one of those loops about six inches long so I can pass it over any reel that I choose to. It works pretty well that way. All right.